Hi, I'm Antonio Sella, and in this video we are going to discuss the MATLAB code to simulate the so-called fugoid mode in a simplified model of the dynamics of an aircraft. In a previous video, we saw that under some assumptions, the most important of which was negligible rotational inertia, so the plane behaved like a weather vane, instantly aligning with the wind velocity vector, with the airspeed vector. Well, with that assumptions and some extra stuff, we could consider the simplified dynamics of the airplane as the dynamics of a point mass. And we derived that tangential acceleration was the derivative of the airspeed and was this force balance. And normal acceleration was this force balance divided by mass. And as the reference frame is not inertial, it moves with the aircraft's body, then the acceleration was the product of linear speed times angular speed of the path the center of mass is following. So dividing this equation by the speed and replacing lift and drag by some expressions that multiply the square of the airspeed by some coefficient, which is constant for simplicity, but of course in more complex models, those lift and drag coefficients depend on many things about the state of the aircraft. But okay, for a fixed incidence angle, we are assuming then we'll keep these coefficients as constants. So the things that are replacing lift and drag forces by this stuff, we were able to get these blue second order simplified equations of the fugoid motion of an aircraft. And of course, once we have V and theta, we can integrate them to simulate position as the bottom black equations. So we are going to simulate this in MATLAB. And in this video, we will just discuss the MATLAB code detail. The actual interpretation of the simulation results will be left for brevity for a forthcoming video. So let's go to MATLAB. How do we insert the model? Well, we'll first start by giving numerical values to the constant parameters in the model equations. So we need values for mass, gravity, and lift and drag coefficients. So I invented these ones. This has no relationship whatsoever with any existing commercial aircraft. It's just an invention of mine to be able to compile this code. We will also indicate which is the thrust, which we will assume it to be constant, even this u may have velocity dependent terms, for instance, in fixed power propeller planes. But we are dismissing that stuff in here to keep things simple. So the thing is that introducing the model is basically copying the equations to MATLAB in this way. If we copy line by line the four equations, we get the code we have highlighted in the MATLAB window. As everything in the right hand side of the four equalities depends only on V and theta, these are the two arguments of this state ec, state equation function I defined in MATLAB. So good, we have finished with the model. How can we simulate that model? Well, we need to set some initial conditions for the numerical differential equation solver. Initial speed, V0. Initial pitch, this 6 degrees. Initial longitudinal position, set to 0 in here. And initial altitude, set to 10 units. And once I have that initial condition vector, that will be the last argument to ODE45, which is the numerical integration code we will use from MATLAB. As we are not putting any tolerance related argument, we will use default tolerances. ODE45 needs also the time I wish to simulate the system. The out will be this vector of time instance, so I will simulate from 0 to 1.5 seconds, and I wish a simulation frame for a later animation every 25 milliseconds. And the most important argument is this ODE fun. 
which is a function that must take as arguments the clock, lowercase t, and the state, a four-dimensional vector, with the result of the integration of these four derivatives. Then the output of ODE fun must be a four-dimensional vector with the state time derivatives. So I will just call the state equation with only the two first components of the state. X1 is airspeed, X2 is pitch, because those two numbers are the only ones I need in order to compute the four state derivatives. So with these lines, we have coded the simulation. Finished. So the only remaining thing is, let's say, plotting the results. We'll make some plots depending on time, and we'll also make some animations. Let's go. If we first look at this code, in this code we plot the first state, airspeed, and the second state, pitch angle, with this kind of axis and plot stuff that you can look in MATLAB's documentation if you have doubts on what each line does. The next fragment of code will plot the accelerations. Why? Well, because accelerations are proportional to forces, so if accelerations are big, maybe something breaks in the aircraft. So it's of interest to plot them, and in fact we will plot the modulus of the acceleration vector, the normal acceleration, and the lift force. If the lift force, which must be provided by the wings, is excessive, the wings may break. So, how do we compute the accelerations? Well, we'll first compute a dummy temporary variable providing me the four state derivatives, and basically the tangential acceleration is the first component, and the normal acceleration is the product of linear speed, the first simulated state, times the angular velocity, which is the output of the second state equation. It is this product, the thing that it's equal to the normal acceleration. Well, so if I store this, I will get only the normal acceleration, and if I store the whole acceleration vector's norm, then I will get the acceleration in a plot. Also, the lift provided by the wings is just the airspeed, first simulated state, squared times the lift coefficient. So with this, I can plot those accelerations, and we end up having plots like this. In the left one we have in blue the airspeed, in red the pitch angle, and in the right hand side we have in blue the total acceleration, in red the normal acceleration, depending on the sign it will mean that the path rotates in clockwise or counterclockwise direction, and we have in yellow the wing provided lift to check if the wing breaks or not. The thing is that in order to better understand these plots in which the abscissa axis is time, maybe we wish to have a look at the x, y coordinates, at the actual path the plane is taking. So we will also provide some animation code to draw things like this, or well, we may simulate for a longer time So we can see how the plane glides, and if it's a stable gliding, which is the final gliding angle, etc. Good, so let's see this animation code. We'll first store in the output variable the position x, y, and the pitch angle theta for later use. These two lines will be used in axis scaling, they are just cosmetic. This thing will be a rotation matrix, so that it rotates a point theta radians. And then this plane and wing arrays define the outline of the picture of a plane 
and the picture of a wing that we are plotting here. So this for loop is the main animation loop. First we get x, y and theta for each frame. This line translates adding to the positions the center of gravity position and rotates the plane outline an angle theta and likewise translation and rotation of the wing outline so that it is thrown in the correct place and orientation. Once we have the plane outline at the correct place and pitch angle, then we go to the figure we wish to draw onto. And with this plot, we plot the trajectory, this blue dashed line for a better interpretation of what the plane is doing. And these two patch commands plot the plane and the wing in here. Finally, this X line and Y line plot sort of across here, horizontal and vertical lines. They are barely noticeable because in my 4K monitor they are extremely thin, but somehow they highlight in here the center of gravity point whose dynamics we are simulating. So, carrying out some axis management so that the figure limits are nice and pretty. And drawing the frame, we repeat that until the simulation ends so we have the animation. So we'll end with this. Let's summarize. In this video, we have shown MATLAB code to simulate these four equations, which constitute the simplified model of the so-called fugoid mode in flight dynamics. Modeling and simulation was based in ODE for 5, and we provided code to picture some time plots, and also these plots may be better understood if we watch an animation such as this one. And we also explained the code that produces this animation. So this is it. Actual physical interpretation and understanding on the meaning of this kind of movement will be left for a forthcoming video for brevity. We end here. Thanks for your attention.